who else is out here? And there's Chris. Chris Smith, we must be related. <laughs> Yeah, I, I am a Smith now of, um, how long we've we been married? Six years, I guess. And uh, I did not know how many, I knew there was a lot of Smiths, but I didn't know how many Smiths. But but anyway, let me um, see if I got YouTube up and running. It's always an adventure trying to see if your stream's going to work or not. Hello, hello, hey, Dot, or Joanne. And there's Priya Art and Kay Hammer. Thank you guys all for being here. And uh, I'm kind of at an angle for you guys. We're going to be making some handmade bows today. And um, this was the best setup that I could think of where I could get everybody where I can kind of show you exactly what I'm doing here with my hands. So um, let me make sure that YouTube's up and running and then we'll get started. So how is everybody? Do you guys all have a break from the heat like we are? It's kind of refreshing. I know we've all been kind of under the, in the frying pan. Hey, Valerie. All right, so so anyway, as I said, I was gonna make some handmade bows. We've done the easy bow and the pro bow the last few weeks, and um, I wanted to show a couple of versions on how to make a handmade bow. And uh, don't freak out because um, you know, I have a lot of people tell me they just can't make a handmade bow because of their hands are sore or something like that. And I have to tell you, I had to take some leave before I come down here <laughs> today uh, because with the rain, my hands are really aching today. But I promise you, if you um, follow what I'm telling you, you will be able to make a handmade bow. It does take practice over and over and over, but it's like once it clicks, then um, you know, it'll work for you. And you know, and that's not to say that my bows are perfect every time. They're not, and uh, I'll be the first one to tell you that. But um, but it does take practice. It takes patience. Uh, another thing, you've got to work with wired ribbon. If you don't use wired ribbon, you're just asking yourself to fail and get frustrated. Um, you know, as you advance and if you get more comfortable making bows, you know, there's ways you can kind of manage with some lesser quality ribbon, but just know that, you know, to start out, and that's what I'm going to show you today, is just some ways to start out and get comfortable making handmade bows. Um, I'm going to work out or start out just um, originally just with a one ribbon, and that's what I advise for you. And um, as I said, find a ribbon that is good quality. You want to look at not just the the fabric itself, which this is a really nice ribbon to work with. It's it's pretty firm, has a lot of body to it. You can see when I when I put, do a loop how it just stands up on its own. I put it down, it's gonna stay where I tell it. But you want a um, nice body in the fabric, but then you also wanna look at the ribbon, or I'm sorry, you also wanna look at the wire. Um, you know, the wire needs to be uh, at least medium body. Depending on how good your fabric is will dictate how much leeway you have with the wire. But it's best if you have both, which this ribbon does. And, and it's not an expensive ribbon. You don't have to spend a lot of money for ribbon. Um, you know, expense and uh, say, you know, so-called designer ribbons doesn't always equate to nice ribbon. Um, you know, Sam's Club, they should be getting their Christmas ribbon out here before too long, I'd think. You know, they have some not decent quality ribbon. You can get about a 50-yard roll for almost $7. I don't know. Well, I say that with inflation this year. I don't know how it's, how much it's going to cost. But but anyway, you, you understand the point. And that's where I would start if you're just wanting to learn how to make bows. Just find you some inexpensive, good quality ribbon and um, just go for it. And um, now... There's lots of ways to hand make bows. My, what I am gonna show you is not necessarily what you might have been taught before, but this is what I, or what works for me. And, um, you know, I make gobs and gobs of bows every week and um, it works for me. If you've got a way that works for you, by all means do that, you know, use that method. So, hey Susan. Oh, thank you, Christina, for the stars. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. 
And um, now I'm gonna get started here on making the bows. Um, and the first one we're gonna be making is just a single ribbon and uh, it's gonna have some tails and I'll tell you some different things you can do with it along the way. But um, then we'll work on doing a couple of different ribbon bows and that kind of thing. So, all right, so let me get in position here so I can, hopefully this will show you my exact hand method. Now I make my bow uh, from the bottom up to the top. Now a lot of people will do the top bow or top loops first and work down the bottom. I do it this way, uh, typically. I mean, there's different ways to do it, but like I said, if you've got a way that works, don't change it. All right, so what I usually do, what I advise you to do if you're starting out, we're just gonna get us an, a nice tail where you're not struggling. Make sure you've got plenty of ribbon off your spool there so you're not struggling with that. What you're gonna do you're going to take this ribbon and you're just going to pinch it. So now we've got a tail and we've got a pinch here. Don't worry about measuring at this point. If you want to, that's fine, but I usually, I, you know, to start out, I wouldn't worry about it. Just make a loop. All right, so what we're going to do, I've got my, you know, my fingers pinched here. I'm going to bring this fabric back to the back and I'm going to pinch it. Okay, so I've got, I've got, all I've got is a, a loop here. Haven't done anything fancy. All right, now, the next thing I'm going to do, because this is, this ribbon has uh, a single-sided, and I advise, even if you're using double-sided ribbon, I usually keep with this pattern, but um, we're going to have to do some twisting so that the correct side of the ribbon is where we're going to be able to see it on the correct side of the loop, right? All right, so we've got, we've got it pinched, we've got our loop. Now I'm gonna take this ribbon here, I'm gonna twist it at 180 degrees, okay? I do not have a death grip here. And that's one thing, you know, people talk about their hands cramping. If, it's, if it is, if that's happening with you, you're probably holding the ribbon too tight. I mean, you could easily slide this ribbon in and out of my hand. All you need is it tight enough to where it's not going to slip out. That's all you need. Okay. All right. So we've got we've got it. The loop. We come down here. We've twisted it once. We've done a 180 degree turn. Now I'm going to just take this ribbon back to the back. And again, we're not going to measure. We're not going to worry about being perfect right now. I just took that right back to the back. I just made a loop just like that. I'm holding it with my thumb and my um, middle finger there. Now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna pinch it. Right? So we've got our tail, we've got two loops. Then I'm gonna take this ribbon. Remember, we gotta get this, this ribbon where the right side's gonna be showing, so I'm gonna twist it again. Now I'm looking at the good side of the ribbon. I'm gonna take it back to the back. And again, I'm not holding a death grip on it. Now I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna pinch it. And guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna twist it, that's right. Twist it, bring it back to the center. And you're just gonna keep repeating that process so you get however many bow loops you want. And people ask me all the time, well, how many bow loops do I need to make? Well, it, it depends. It, you know, it just depends on your project and what kind of look you're wanting. Um, you'll see me all the time if you watch me make wreaths, I'll take it up, I'll take my bow up and, and you know, try it on for size. And um, so you just gotta, it just depends on what you're doing. If I were making a lantern swag, this would probably be about the right size. Um, again, depending on how big I'm making it though. All right, so now we're back here to the back. And you get a little bit more ribbon. All right, we're back here to the back. Again, I've got the wrong side of my ribbon showing. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna twist it again. And guess what? I'm gonna take it right back to the back. And uh, now one thing I, I've been asked before and I, I forgot to mention this now, 
Um, let me go ahead and I'm going to pinch this just like we've been doing. I don't have these stacked right on top of each other. They're more or less coming in here beside each other, if you can see that. My first loop was over here, and notice it's starting to drift back to the, you know, the meaty part of my hand. And I'm just kind of shoving the next loop in. Watch how I do this. All right, have I already twisted? No, I haven't. Did I? Yes, I did. Already twisted. Okay, so we're going to take it back to the back again and see where I'm bringing that in. I'm not having to stack it right on top of each other. I'm just bringing it right back here beside. Now what that what that does, a couple of things. Number one, it makes it a lot, heck of a lot easier You're not trying to stack each other right on top of them. But um, then two, you're moving the bulk of the ribbon back here where you're not gonna be having to cramp your hands trying to keep a hold of it. Okay, so see see where my ribbon's at now? And again, I'm not even I'm not even barely touching this ribbon. All right, so as I said, you just keep on repeating that pattern back and forth and back and forth. Now, um, you know, if you wanted to make differing size of loops, then you, you can do that. But again, I didn't want you to worry about size of your ribbon or size of your loops right now. I just wanted you to learn the pattern. Okay. All right. So let's do that again. Start completely over. And that's what I, I advise you to do and if you're new to handmade bows. Just get you a roll of ribbon and just keep doing it over and over, okay? All right, so we got our tail right here. We're gonna pinch it. We're gonna bring our ribbon back to the back. We're making our loop. Got our loop right there. That's what it looks like from the side. You see, my knuckles aren't wide or anything, <laughs> right? Okay, now let's twist it. And we're gonna bring it back to the back. Pinch it. I'm gonna twist it. Bring it back to the back. Pinch it. Twist it. I've said before we need to make that into a song, some kind of bow making song, if anybody's so inclined. All right, now we're gonna take it and we're gonna pinch it. And again, see, I'm, I'm just pushing it in the side over here. I'm not trying to stack them on top of each other. All right, I'm gonna twist it. Bring it back to the back. I'm gonna pinch it. Twist it and bring it back to the back. So I've got a six loop bow here. I still need a tail, so let's twist it one more time. And we'll bring this over the top so that they're meeting you know, on the same side. All right, now let's, I'm not gonna cut this off the ribbon roll because I'm gonna reuse it. But you know, if you wanted to make a tail, you just cut it right there. I wanted to show you though how I'm gonna do my pipe cleaner. All right, and this is me looking at it right here. I'm gonna take my pipe cleaner and I'm just gonna stick it right there underneath all this ribbon, right there by the meat of my palm. And I'm gonna come out over here in between my pointing finger, my pointer and my middle finger. So here I am looking at it again. I'm just gonna take that pipe cleaner over the top Secure it, and we'll twist it a time or two. Whoops, I let that let that turn back. But so anyway, then you just fluff it out. And like I said, if you you know as you get more skilled at doing handmade bows, then you can vary the size of your loops. Again, we didn't we didn't measure any of these or or eyeball them even. But um, you know, just work on the on the pattern, and you're gonna be amazed how easy this is. I'm, I promise you, anybody can do it. And again, the main thing as far as sore hands, um, you know, you don't wanna hold your, your ribbon with a death grip. 
and then you want it to kind of drift back toward the palm of your hand as you're stacking that ribbon in. Okay, I'm gonna look through here and see if I have any questions. Hey, Birdlene, hey, Sherry, and there's Sharon. Sharon, are you good and soggy here? Hey, Jamie. All right, let me look and see if I see any questions on TikTok. I gotta stand on my head here. Flores to 25 years, oh my goodness. Well, stacking, well, that, like I said, if it works for you, by all means, Heather, you know, whatever works for you. I am not a proponent of changing anybody's practice, but it works well for me. I'm just looking through here and have any, seeing if I have any questions. Well, shoot, and I just, now I can't get my screen back here. Oh, goodness, sweet, sweet Texas tea back in the hundreds again. All right, I don't see any other questions or comments, but like I said, if you have a way that works for you, by all means. I don't think anybody's ever told me that I had ugly bows, though, doing it my way. And what it, you know, find one someplace that, or some way that works, then do it. All right, let's get rid of that ribbon. I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing. We're gonna do the exact same process, and we're gonna do two ribbon bows. Hey, Sherry. Okay, and, and again, there's other ways to do this. I'm gonna show you an easy way that works. So a lot of people get intimidated having to change out the ribbons. Get this all untwisted. All right. Now we're just gonna take two ribbons, and again, um, you know, a lot of people feel more comfortable starting with one and a half inch ribbon, and that's what I have here. We're gonna have two of them. And um, Sharon, or Cheryl, you're at, um, asking how do you start? And it's gonna be the same way, I'm gonna do it right here, only we're gonna be using two ribbons, okay? Uh, Valerie is wanting to know in this week's training video, we're using your left hand, maybe because of the camera angle. You know, I usually do make my bows in my left hand. Um, now here's another thing that reminds me of another way people get in trouble sometimes is by um, switching, trying to switch your ribbons back and forth. Um, but just pick your hand. I'm ambidextrous. Some things I do left-handed, some things I do right-handed. So, but for bow making, I usually keep it in my left hand. That's just the way I've, I've, I've learned and it's stuck. Okay, all right, now, like I said, if you're using a single ribbon, we're gonna do the exact same process. The only difference is we've got two ribbons right on top of each other. Hey, Miss Parker, hello, thank you for being here. Oh, and Glenn from, or Glam Mercy, I have a hard time reading these on TikTok. Glam Mercy from Georgia, first time. Well, welcome. I'm glad you're here. And uh, we do bow making about every Tuesday, about one o'clock Eastern. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and get going here. So as I said, we're gonna be using two bow or two ribbons. So I just stack them right on top of each other. And you can do this whether you're doing two and a half inch ribbons, uh, two one and a half inch ribbons, a one and a half and a two and a half, either one. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna pinch it. And as I said, this is the same method we're gonna be doing as I do with the, you know, just one ribbon. So we're gonna be pinching it. Going to bring it back to the back, pinch it, 
So all we've got is our loop there. Just one loop with two ribbons. Now the hard thing is usually just trying to keep them on top of each other. And keep them on top of each other without them getting all twisted, which that's just what happened to me. So we've got one loop. All we've done, we've pinched both sides. Now we're going to come back here. We're going to twist it. Bring it back to the center. Or back to the back, I should say. We're going to pinch it. We're going to twist it. You get a little bit more ribbon here. So we've got it twisted. Bring it back to the center. And again, see where I'm holding it. I'm not, I don't have a death grip. Now we're going to pinch it. Twist it. Bring it back to the back. Just try and keep them, you know, take your time, try to keep them both on top of each other. We're going to pinch it. And then we're going to twist it. Now, I'm not, I wouldn't typically make as many loops because I've got twice as much ribbon here, right? So I wouldn't make as many loops. But we'll put our tail down there. We've got it twisted. Okay, let me go ahead and I'm going to tie this off. We'll do it again too, so if you missed it, that's okay. We're going to do it again. All right, I'm going to take this right back here by the meat of my thumb here. It's coming out between my middle finger and my pointer. All right, I've got my ribbon twisted. We're going to bring that pipe cleaner over the top. Twist it. All right, now, so we've got our bow put together. Now, I usually tell to, to, let me back up. I usually say, you know, don't twist this ribbon or this pipe cleaner too many times. I usually tw twist it a couple of times because you don't want a big stalk on your bow. And, uh, you know, if you've got a big stalk here, you're not going to be able to get it close up where that you could, um, you know, make your bow real good and snug. All right, so we go back here now. We're going to take these ribbons, and we're just going to pull them apart just like this. All right, and you can, you can mix them up, you know, however you like. But now you've got a two you know, two bow or two ribbon bow. And again, I'm not going to cut those off because I'm going to do it again. All right. All right. Anybody have any questions? Hey, Barbara. Where did I find the black and white? Okay, <laughs> I see your conversation over there on Facebook. Yes, um, this ribbon, it is, I, I think I, well, I've had it for quite a while. I bought, I usually buy a bunch at one time, but I'm pretty sure this is a, this is a Craig Bachman ribbon. And you can get those about anywhere. Um, I know Craft Outlet and that, but but what, um, I think it was Christine, yes. What Christine was talking about, Christine and I both got burnt uh, one time buying a, a big quali big amount of ribbon and it was really poor quality. In fact, I ended up giving mine away. I didn't even use it. But um, this is what they call is printed black uh, buffalo plaid on canvas. It's not the woven, and I think the other one was linen, and it, they were both very poor quality. This is very nice. This is printed uh, buffalo plaid on canvas. And I believe I got it at um, Craft Outlet, probably. That's where I buy a lot of my ribbon. Hey, Jean. Oh, thank you, Jean. Thank you.
Oh, thank you, Anna. Thank you. So glad to hear you say that. Um, on TikTok, they're asking, do you ever you mix different types of ribbon, uh, like canvas with velvet? Yes, absolutely. I sure do. Um, I even put, sometimes I'll put burlap with velvet, just depending on the design. But yes, yes, I do that all the time. In fact, these are two different. This is um, Dupione ribbon, and then we have a canvas ribbon. But yeah, I do that. I think it makes a kind of interesting. Um, now, sometimes if the, you know, it depends on the style of the design that I'm making, but sometimes it might not be appropriate. Um, for example, my cowboy wreath, I put, probably wouldn't put velvet on that. But, um, hey, Vanita. Uh, which one makes the best bow, two and a half or one and a half inches? Um, all of the above. I mix, I use all ribbon, all kinds of ribbon, Vanita. I use four inch ribbon, I use two and a half, I use one and a half, and I use uh, one inch and five eighths inch even. Um, but I mix all those sizes together. Oh, thank you guys for following on TikTok. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Hey, Lady Hawks. <laughs> all right. Let me go back here and see if I got any other questions. Hey, Ethel May. Good morning. It's afternoon here, Ethel May. What time is it? It's about, it's 1.30 in the afternoon here, Ethel May. <laughs> okay, so let's undo this. We'll do this one one more time, too. All right, and but like I said, this is the same exact pattern with your hands that you're going to do with the single ribbon. Like I said, the struggle is just, you know, keeping the two ribbons on top of each other and, um, you know, not letting them get twisted. Now, you can also do three ribbons at a time, but I usually don't. Uh, I make a lot of these kind of ribbons, but I don't, or bows, but I don't use three a lot using this method, I should say. So, okay. All right, so let's get started again. And it, as always, we've got our tail down here. If you want a tail, that is. You don't have to have a tail. All right, we're going to take our ribbon. We're going to pinch it. We're going to take it back to the back. Make us a loop, however big loop you want. We're going to pinch it. We're going to twist it. You get untwisted here. All right, we, we've, we've done one loop and we've twisted it here at the back. I'm gonna bring it back to the back. We're gonna pinch it. We're gonna twist it. I'm trying to keep these all together here. And, and you just got to run your hand over it, and then it usually lays back where it's supposed to be. All right, we're going to pinch it. We're going to twist it. Going to bring it back to the back. And you know, whenever you come back to the center, you may want to just check and make sure you did a complete twist with your ribbon. Uh, that's what I was doing there. I was fixing one I got a little bit lazy on and didn't twist it completely. All right, now we're going to pinch it. Twist it. And then you can just keep on repeating that same process. I'm going to pinch it, but then again, remember, you know, however many ribbons you've put here, you've got twice as many loops, right? So I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't go too many more. So we'll go ahead and stop there, going to twist it, going to get our pipe cleaner straightened out here. All right, so I'm going to go in here, and, and again, 
I'm not doing a death grip here on my, my pointer fingers, and I'm letting the ribbon kind of shift back, okay? And I'm gonna take this pipe cleaner, run it underneath there, bring it out between my pointer and my middle finger, bring it over the top. Now I'm just gonna twist it. Okay, all right, so we've got our bow now, and then we just go in here and we just open all those loops up. And I try to put them opposing sides, like, you know, I brought the, the Dupioni ribbon this way, so I'll do the same so that I'm alternating. And when you get it in your design, you can come in here and you can, um, you know, you can put some of the bow loops in the center, like this. where it makes it look like it's, you know, a little bit more full toward the middle, and so on. Just whatever look you like. Okay? Like I said, this isn't a fancy bow. This isn't anything we measured our loops or anything, so I'm sure they're, un excuse me, uneven. But uh, I just wanted to show you the, you know, how easy it can be to make hand make your own bow. You know, a lot of times people don't have bow makers or um, say you're, you know, wrapping Christmas presents or um, shower gift or anything like that, um, how quick, you know, you might not want to pull out your bow maker. So. Um, Barbara's saying she has a Bodabra bow maker, never used it. Any comments or reviews about it? I have one, Barbara, and actually I tried to pull, I tried to find it last week before I went live. Um, and I couldn't find it. I was going to show people different bow makers. But um, I, to me, I mean, it, it serves the same purpose as the easy bow maker, except you don't have your spool holder. Um, I do like it, like whenever I'm making those um, mesh wreaths to have the ruffles and that kind of thing, sometimes I'll use that to, to hold my ruffles. But to make a bow, it, it's a little bit loose. It, you know, the base is not loose or not, stable um, enough for me. I get kind of rowdy when I start pulling on my ribbons. <laughs> so, oh, good deal, Carol. Carol, and I saw your comment too about the loopy loops. I wasn't sure what you were talking about. So I was gonna ask you about that um, it, later in the group, but I didn't quite understand what you were talking about. So it's 11.30 at, in Alberta, Ethel May, okay. So you're just two hours behind, or two hours uh, behind us now. Uh, Verlene's wanting to know what the item number is on that um, ribbon, the black and white. Let me find it here. Okay, it's uh, R G zero one seven nine nine zero two. That's RG01799092. And uh, like I said, it's um, printed. It's printed canvas. I can't remember how they word it exactly, but it, I tell you, I would not have thought it was the right one to buy. <laughs> but um, after buying it for you know a few years, I, that's the one you want as far as make, having a good bodied one. All right, anybody have any questions? Thank you guys for all the follows. I really appreciate it. It's much easier than you thought. Well, good deal, I'm glad to hear that. And I've got different ways. I'm actually, I've got a, a they call it a signature bow that I use on my wreaths. Um, I actually just finished a video that I'm getting it put together to, to release on how I make that one. And there, and it is. It's real simple. It's real casual. Now, if I'm making bows to sell, um, you know, just an individual bow by itself, or say, you know, I've had some requests to make bows for weddings and that kind of thing, where they need to be real uniform in that. Um, typically, I'll use my pro bow. Um, if not that, then I would use my um, easy bow maker. I usually don't make those by hand, but. Oh, you wanted a bow that was thinner ribbon, but 
but airy. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I just didn't know what you meant by that, Carol. Thank you for letting me know. Thank you. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Um, oh, show how to do the pipe cleaner again. I sure will. Let me get this undone here. Get my pipe cleaner straightened out. It's a little harder when the pipe cleaner is not, not straight. But uh, let's see. Let me get this all gathered in my hand again. And all I do, I just take, you know, after, you know, this looks terrible, but that's all right. We're showing something else here, right? We're just going to take that pipe cleaner, and I just run it right there right underneath the ribbon and right bes be um, beside the, the meat of my thumb there. And then I let it come out between my two, whoops, I'll let that go, that's all right. I, run it, I bring it back through uh, between my middle finger and my pointer there. So I've got a little tail out here and then I just take the other part and I just run it right over the top and join it back there. And then I just twist it. And like I said, I only twist it about a couple of times because I don't want a big, you know, a big stalk on my bow. I want to be able to get my bow flush to whatever I'm making. So I hope that helps. Why does the wire work out of the ribbon sometimes? It Sometimes it does like this. I don't know why, but sometimes it does. And all I do, Jamie, um, before I go to, um, you know, ship off my wreath, I'll clip that off with some wire cutters. You don't want to remove it because then you're going to lose your wire and your ribbon, but I don't know. It, it just does. Some of it, it does worse than others. Uh, you can see this one, uh, for some reason, this Dupioni, it always does it quite a ways. I don't know if you can see that. It's, it's stuck out about like this. This one's just about a quarter inch over here, but I, I don't know the answer to that. And and it doesn't matter what quality either. I said I've had it on my designer ribbon. It's done that too, so I'm not really sure. All right, and then uh, why does ribbon sometimes seem to fray when cut? Use very sharp scissors, and some of my fit ribbons have a fuzzy fray on the ends where the wire is. Yes, and that's normal. Uh, that's and again, some ribbon it's worse than others. Dupioni it is notorious for having a little bit of fray. Uh, this is more of a I want to say it's a canvas, but it's but it's uh, almost like a plastic feel to it, and um, this does not fray at all. Um, but it's just depending on the material. And again, right before I ship anything off, I always go through and just kind of trim off what I can uh, if I have any fuzzies that are hanging. Uh, sharp scissors certainly help, but um, that doesn't completely remove it. Now, sometimes, too, I might even uh, use some fray check if it's bad fray check. Uh, that might stain it, though, so you got to be careful. Plus, um, then sometimes, too, I might singe the ends a little bit. Just take a, something hot and singe it. Now, I've heard some people use um, Mod Podge, but I've not ever used that. All right, any other questions? <laughs> you tried using the pro bow with the hand and it's found it to be a lot. It is, it is. And I always, I always warn people up front, uh, it took me about three solid days of trying it. But um, yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> it's, it's a lot, it's, it, but once it clicks, it's, you're there. But just keep on trying it. Just keep practicing. Be sure that you, um, you know, I've got a lot of videos on my channel. Um, and then to uh, Regina Sellers, she has lots of really good um, um, videos on her page, um, Probo the Hand. Lots of good videos. So, so don't try to use a lighter on it. Um, I can't tell you to do that. <laughs> I, I used to show horses and we had lead ropes and we used to have to singe those because they would fall apart. Um, so I am very practiced at that, but you can get in trouble there really in a hurry. And actually I about did one time. I had uh, some ribbon I was just gonna singe. It was already on my wreath 
and I had it, the ribbon I was using was next to some frayed burlap. Well, I saw my life flash before my eyes on that one. I, yeah, I haven't moved that fast in years because <laughs> before I knew it, that fire was going up that wreath. And uh, yeah, so be very, very, very careful. Yeah, no, Jamie, as long as your scissors are, are uh, sharp. And, and like I said, sometimes I'll, um, you know, right before my wreath goes out the door, I'm going and clipping any kind of frays. So. Oh, the loops got tangled. Was it just whenever you um, were trying to fluff it? Yeah, I don't know how they would got tangled unless it was whenever you were trying to fluff it, but let me know. Oh, Verlaine. Verlaine's got that ribbon up. <laughs> Good. Oh, fluffing. Hmm. Yeah, I start at the very bottom. You want to work bottom to top and uh, the very bottom ribbon, and you want to take them opposite. And uh, if you go back, I, I think last week we did a pro bow, if I remember. But go, just go back and see on... Um, I don't know if I have any on, on TikTok. I wouldn't have any that you could actually see because they don't let they, they don't allow you to download long videos. But um, on my YouTube channel and on Facebook, I've got several Pro Bow uh, demonstrations with the fluffing. And um, the bottom loop unraveled. Okay, that would be that would be that you're not tying it correctly before you take it off the board. <clears throat> but, uh, but yeah, go back and watch some of my videos on YouTube and um, Facebook. I, I think I've got those linked in my bio. I'm not for sure, but, um, but anyway, my, it's adorable deco decor with two O's and they're adorable. But on YouTube and Facebook both, I've got lots of slowed down videos. On the, the ones on TikTok are so fast, you're, there's no way you can see. But yeah, I can see where that would happen. So, oh, you're welcome. You're very welcome. All right, guys, any other questions? The show on a Christmas tree topper on the Pro Bow. Yeah, it, all it is is a big bow, but yes, I, I would I certainly do that. Yeah, we do it do it on the outer well, of course it just depends. I've got a I've got a um I think it's a six foot Christmas tree, and then we've got a nine and a half foot tree, and then we've got one other skinny little tree. And I use I make different sizes for each of them. The the nine foot tree, of course, I've used the very biggest um pegs but the other ones I just use my usual so oh you're welcome thank you guys so much this has been a good good video I like this okay that's all I have for you today and uh, as I said I've got lots of videos on um, well I also have some on my blog um, my blog YouTube and Facebook of doing handmade bows easy bow bows and pro bow bows and um, if you have any questions just shoot me a line i'll be happy to help you and we'll be back every tuesday here at one o'clock and um, you know let me know if there's any other versions of bow making that you'd like to see thank you so much for your time and i will catch you next time bye bye